Today I'm going to show you how I took this big gnarly tree fork and carved it into the slingshot. This is a really ergonomic slingshot with really nice grain pattern and I'm happy with the way it came out. I made my first slingshot over 5 years ago and it was actually my first video on this channel. Since that video I've probably made about 50 or 60 slingshots and I made them loads of different ways, casting metal, CNC machining, 3D printing, lots of different designs and then it got to the point around this time last year where I got bored of making them and I didn't want to make any more. But I've had a break and I've decided it's time to make a new one. So the first step is to get a big tree fork and I recommend getting a really big one, one that's oversized because when you carve all of the different curves into the slingshot you want to make it as comfortable as possible and that's only possible if the fork is absolutely massive. I'm using this really big oak one that I got when I chopped down some trees for some firewood on a farm. Before you carve the wood you want to let it dry out and I left it on a radiator for a couple of months and it got all cracked up but that's alright because I'm planning on filling the cracks with resin. I cut the wood oversized originally so I had to remove a lot of material with a saw first. After that I used a large rasp to flatten one of the sides so that I could draw the shape of the slingshot on. I just do a rough shape of what I knew I wanted from a previous slingshot onto the wood and you can get pretty creative with the shape, just anything that you think would look comfortable or you can copy this one. I then start to remove more material with the saw. I drew on a more accurate shape using a template that I made. This design is my tail hammer design which I developed a while ago and it's still my most comfortable slingshot design. After that there was just a lot of shaping using hand tools and a dremel in my drill to try and get everything to the outside profile of the lines that I drew. You can see some of the nice grain of the oak wood coming through already and I know that at this point the slingshot's going to look really good when it's finished. I find that hand rasps are the best way to shape something like this since it gives you a lot more control over how much material you're removing than a belt sander, because with a belt sander it's a lot easier to go over the lines and go too far, but hand files and rasps are a lot slower. At this point I've roughly got the overall profile of the slingshot handle in one direction and I want to turn it 90 degrees and get the rough profile in the other direction. And for this I'm going to be carving in a palm swell and it's going to go out and then I'm going to carve a groove for all of my fingers. And you can play around with this shape and geometry. I've just found that something like this is really comfortable when you apply a lot of force on it. Once I've got both of the shapes at 90 degrees carved to roughly the right outside dimension, I then start to round everything over and I just squeeze the handle and feel where it's sharp and it's digging in, then round it over with the rasps until it's comfortable. Once I've got the handle nice and comfortable, it's then time to work on the forks. It's really important that these are both the same length and pointing in the same direction. The shorter your forks are, the less force there'll be on your hand from the moment of pulling back the slingshot bands, but also the more chance you have of hitting your hand with the slingshot. The shape of the forks isn't as important for the overall function of the slingshot, it's more for the aesthetics of it, and if they're not completely symmetrical then it'll look really bad, so take time making sure that they're even. At this point I'm happy with the shape of the slingshot that I've carved and when I press it as hard as I can against the bench, it feels very comfortable in my hand. However at this point I was also a bit worried that the wood wasn't dry enough since I only left it to dry for a couple of months and I've carved away quite a lot of it. So I put it in an oven for a couple of hours on the lowest temperature that I could. 
As you can see, it was a good idea putting it in the oven since some cracks developed, and if I'd sanded it, these cracks would have came out eventually anyway. So I'm glad that I got them out now. And they're not too much of an issue since I'm planning on filling them with epoxy resin anyway. So that'll strengthen up the slingshot again. I wanted to colour the resin black, so I got some coal and I crushed it up in a piece of paper. Then I mixed that in with the resin so that it was about 50-50 resin and crushed up coal dust. Then I pushed that into the cracks of the wood. I was also slightly worried at this point that the slingshot forks weren't strong enough for the high force that I was planning on putting on them with some strong slingshot bands. So I drilled through a few pins and glued them in, and these are steel pins so they'll reinforce any cross grain along the wood. Looking back on it though, this step was probably not necessary since the forks are still pretty thick and it would take a lot of force to snap them. At this point the final shape of the slingshot is complete and it's now time to start removing all of the deep scratches done by all of the hand rasps and I do that mostly using old metal files and 80 grit sandpaper. After the 80 grit sandpaper I then slowly move up through the grits to about 200-300 grit sandpaper that makes everything pretty smooth. It's really important to be very patient with this step since the final finish on the slingshot is determined by how long you spend sanding and the more time you spend sanding the better the wood is going to look and the nicer it's going to feel. So spend a lot of time on this step if you're going to. A really important area that you've got to make sure is smooth and round with no sharp edges is the top of the forks since this is where the rubber is going to attach onto the slingshot and if there's any sharp or rough areas then it's just going to wear through the bands very quickly. So I smooth them out with a metal file and then with sandpaper. I also put a groove all the way around just using a rat tail file and this is going to make it much easier to attach the bands on so they won't fly off. After that I made sure to sand the slingshot all the way up to 400 grit on every single surface and this makes it incredibly smooth and brings out the grain really nicely. This is probably the longest and most boring step of the process but it's really worth it if you persevere. Then it's time to apply some finish to the wood and there's loads of different options that you can go for. I just go for some boiled linseed oil since it brings out the grain quite nicely, helps protect the wood quite well and is really easy to apply. You can also go for different varnishes and stains and things like that, I prefer to keep it simple. So I finished making the slingshot and I'm happy with the way it's turned out, now it's time to make some bands so that I can test it out and shoot it. First thing I need to do is make the pouch which is going to hold the ammo. This is made from some old boot making leather and it's really important to try and choose as soft a leather as possible so that it hurts less when it hits your hand. This step is pretty simple, I basically cut it into a big rectangle big enough for the ammo that I'm going to use and I punch some holes in it that I can fit the bands through on either side and have a centre hole in the middle which is going to help me to centre the ball bearings in the pouch. Now that I've got the pouch I need to cut the actual rubber which is going to be providing the force for the slingshot. I'm just using some latex based exercise rubber called Theraband Gold. You can use loads of different types of rubber but this is the type of stuff I'd recommend, definitely latex based since it normally shoots faster and the gold stuff that they sell is the thickest stuff and it lasts a really long time. I cut six strips of the exercise rubber and they were 30 centimeters long and at the fork end they were three centimeters wide and then at the pouch end they were two centimeters wide so there's a one centimeter taper on the bands. It's quite easy to attach the bands to the pouch, I simply pushed three of the pieces through the hole in the pouch, folded them back over them on themselves and then tied it round with a piece of elastic band really tightly and that's actually strong enough to hold on the pouch. I used the exact same method to attach the bands to the front of the slingshot and since there's a nice groove that I carved in the slingshot already it all fits on very nicely and I then do the same thing to the other side, make sure that it's not twisted and the slingshot's complete and ready to test out. For ammo for the slingshot I started off using these 15mm steel ball bearings. These work pretty well and they're very light so they shoot very fast. I knew the slingshot could handle something a bit heavier, so I ordered some 20mm ball bearings off eBay. These are again solid steel and they worked a lot better, had a lot more impact.
So that's pretty much it. I've enjoyed making this slingshot. It was really fun going back and making a project which was pretty much one of the first things that I made and helped build this channel. And I really enjoyed the way that this slingshot performed as well. I was pleased with it and I'm glad with the way that it came out. I hope that you can appreciate some of the effort and time that I put into creating this video and hopefully it's been helpful for you if you want to create a slingshot. If you did enjoy this video I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and also consider supporting me on Patreon. You might be wondering why there's not been a video for over five months and there's a lot of different reasons for that. The main reason is that I've been doing my A-levels and I got my results back recently and I got into university and got everything that I wanted and now I've got a year out so I've got a lot of time to work on plenty of videos so you should expect hopefully more regular uploads in the future. Also another reason that there's been a lot of uploads missing is because a lot of the work that I did on my YouTube channel was also involved with my art project and a lot of that content I can't release until the art project's been marked for some stupid reason due to the exam board but now that that's done I can release all of that and I've done some really cool stuff to do with that like 10,000 volt Lichtenberg figures, lots of wood turning and metal casting, combining metal and wood and stuff like that so hopefully I'll make for some enjoyable content. If you want to check out any of that stuff before the videos themselves are out, I actually made a website for it and the link to that will be in the description down below and on screen now. So thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you soon with the next one.